All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the fall 2024 planning session for our pre-law chapters. My name is Katie Gibbs. I'm the Director of Operations and Membership here at Phi Alpha Delta, and my contact information is here if you ever want to reach out to me. Um, Katie at pad.org, or this number right here is my cell phone number. If you're someone who likes a text, I am perfectly happy answering a text as I am answering an email. So again, I'm Katie Gibbs, the Director of Operations and Membership. We are so happy you are all are joining us today and giving us some of your time so we can talk about planning for the fall 2024 semester. Um, we also have our Chapter Operations Coordinator, Zena Strench, here. She's going to be helping us if you guys have any Q&A, um, any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. If you want to say hi, Zena. Hi there. So my email is also on this slide if you need to reach me. And again, I will be answering questions in the Q&A. All right. So this is a webinar. It is being recorded. It will be available on Phi Alpha Delta's YouTube channel. Our past presentations are already on the YouTube channel. And I am going to email you all the slides after the presentation. So yes, you will be receiving these slides, I promise. Um, this time is for you. I already know all this information. So if you have questions, if you have something you need clarification on, please raise your hand, ask in the Q&A, send us an email. We are here to help guide you. So speaking of we, um, I see a raised hand if you can put it in the Q&A or the chat so we can see what question you have. So this is your executive office staff. I'm Katie, I'm here today. We also have Zena here today, but we are not the only staff members here at the executive office. Everyone that you see here, our full-time job, our nine to five jobs are making sure that all of our Phi Alpha Delta chapters are successful and have the resources they need to be able to operate their chapter. So if you need anything, you can always start with Zena. If there's something that Zena cannot help you with, she's gonna pass it on to me. And if there's something I can't pass you, um, help you with, she, I'll pass it on to our executive director, Andrew Sagan. We also have Leslie Plummer. She's our director of tech services. Everything you see on the website, that is all her. Uh, we have La Chate Grayson. She's our director of leadership development and DEI initiatives. I'm going to talk a little bit more about her projects later. We have Summer Stevens, who is our communications and marketing coordinator. Uh, she handles all of our social media, and she's also working on The Reporter, which is Phi Alpha Delta's official publication. We also have Danielle Knotts. I'm sure a lot of you have already communicated with her. She does a lot of our merchandising, um, our shipping. She does a lot of our budgeting concerns. So we are all here to work as a team to help your chapter. So what can you expect from today's conversation? My goal with today is to make sure you all know how to access the resources you need to operate your chapter. We're going to talk about the things that we get questions about the most. Um, and because it's fall, we're going to talk about recruitment because recruitment is our number one focus for fall. Um, and then we're going to finish up with events, programming, deadlines. So I'm going to go quick today. I'm giving you a lot of information today. If there is anything that you need more information on, we can always schedule a virtual chapter visit and dive into other things um, deeper. So the fall semester, you guys have a lot going on. If you are a typical Phi Alpha Delta officer, I know Phi Alpha Delta is not the only responsibility that you have in addition to your classes. So remember, schoolwork always comes first before Phi Alpha Delta. So we know the fall semester can be overwhelming. I just want you guys to keep three things in mind for the fall semester. Number one, recruitment of new members and holding your initiation ceremonies. That should be your primary focus right now is making sure that we're getting our new members in. This is the time. This is when you guys are having your orientation fairs. Um, we've already been seeing the membership applications coming in. You guys are already doing great. Um, next up is our pre-law conference. We also have that part of that is our law expo and our mock trial competition. You do not have to compete in the mock trial competition to come to pre-law conference. Um, very quickly, there are grants available for pre-law conference and the fraternity expectation is that every chapter is represented by at least one member at the conference. So we want one chapter member from 
uh, um, every chapter to be at Phi Alpha Delta's pre-law conference to help meet that expectation. Your first member gets to register with their registration fee waived. So we want to see all of you at pre-law conference this fall. Um, we already have about 100 students registered to attend. So let's make sure that your chapter is one of those to register. Um, never too early to start planning ahead. The earlier you start planning, the more successful you're going to be. So your other third focus for the fall semester is to start thinking about in the spring. In the spring, you're going to hold elections and officer transitions. So let's start thinking about um, who do you want to serve in those officer roles? I know a lot of you were probably very recently elected as officers, but it's already time to start thinking about who's going to take your place so that your chapter can continue. So we're going over a lot of information today. Just know your three tasks are recruitment, pre-law conference, and planning ahead. So first off, um, like I said, I know a lot of you have just recently taken on this officer role in the spring. If you guys have not completed this officer transition checklist, this is one of the first meetings or maybe one of your first executive board meetings that you need to do. Let's make sure you have the proper officer transition. I hear from students all the time that they were just handed the chapter and they have no idea what to do. If you start with these steps, you're really going to set yourself up for success. So let's transfer your accounts, your passwords passwords, social media, bank accounts. If you are not sure about your bank account, if you need to set up a bank account, let us know. We are here to help with that. Make sure you transfer all your chapter materials. If you guys have certificates and pins from last semester, we expect that those are distributed to the new members. So if your previous officers have any materials, a chapter banner, a gavel, please try to connect with them to try to get them if you have not already. Um, very important, we want to make sure that Phi Alpha Delta has a good relationship with your school. First thing with that is let's make sure you guys are a registered student organization this semester. If you have not already, let's make sure we learn those deadlines so that you can ensure that you are a registered student organization. Um, each officer should know what their role is and what um, we expect them to do. We, I very much suggest that you guys create a binder for each position that you can pass on to the next set of officers. Um, if you have not already, you guys should finalize your fall programming calendar. When you have your calendar of events, please send it to us here at the executive office. We will go over your calendar. We will make suggestions. We will give you connections if there's opportunities that we see on your calendar. Um, and you also might want to think about what are some of the events that you guys held last year or last semester, which ones worked, which ones didn't, what do you want to bring back, how can you improve. Um, your calendar is a very important tool. So again, if you do not have your calendar completed, please complete your calendar and send it on to us. Um, we love a goal. So if you guys want to establish some goals like attending pre-law conference, maybe setting a mock trial next year. And then finally, award applications. Award applications are due the first Monday in June every year, but you can complete can complete award applications at any time. One of my pro tips is set at an awards chair and have them fill out an awards application after each one of your events. We are going to honor our award winners at this year's pre-law conference. So um, I hope to see you all there. All right, so officers, we're talking to you. Um, if you haven't had your officer transition, you just learned the steps that you need to take to, to do that. And everything that you need on operating a chapter is on this page, pad.org slash resources and policies. Every guide document policy you need is here. Um, that includes a new officer resource guide. If that does not sound familiar, download a copy of that, print out a copy of it, read it. The information you need is available here. Um, we also have our chapter operations guide, model bylaws. So every chapter should have bylaws in your bylaws. It talks about elections, local dues. If your chapter does not have bylaws or they're not on file with the executive office, we are going to assume that you are following the model bylaws. The model bylaws are also available on this page. Um, we have tons of resources of um, getting your rosters. We can send you all a list of your members. We can send a list of everyone who's completed an application, whether they've paid, whether they haven't. Um, and again, if you guys want to talk anymore, we can always do a virtual chapter visit. Let's just uh, fill out this form to schedule it. All right, so officers, you know about transition. You know how to find the resources you need to operate the chapter. So let's dive into it. 
fall is all about recruitment. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are tabling right now. If you have not requested a recruitment box, a recruitment box is one of the things that comes with your membership. So we have boxes available that have brochures, they have stickers, they have rack cards about our events, um, pens, interest sheet signups, notepads, everything that you need for that table, we have available for you and they are available to your chapter at no cost. All you need to do is fill out the form so we know where to send it. So again, if you guys have not um, requested a recruitment box this semester, please do. We update our materials every semester. So even if you have some things left over from last semester, the materials this year are new. So for fall recruitment, I always want you to think about why did you join Phi Alpha Delta? What did you think and hope that you were gonna get out of it? And let's talk about that with our new members. Um, Phi Alpha Delta should be the pre-law community on your campus. So the goal of the pre-law program is to help students make an informed decision about law school. Our goal is not to get everyone to law school. Our goal is to help you um, decide if that is the right decision for you. Recruitment is important because that is how Phi Alpha Delta is gonna be able to continue on your campus. We wanna have this community, this network of pre-law students at your school. And the only way that that is gonna continue is if you continue to recruit new members. When you're recruiting new members, let them know Phi Alpha Delta is a leadership opportunity. Anyone who wants to give their time and their skills to Phi Alpha Delta, let's give them a role. Let's give them a chair position. Um, the more leadership opportunities you give to your students, the more that they're going to be engaged with the chapter and the more likely they are to show up to your events. So recruiting new members is very important to build your community find those future leaders, expand our network, and they also offer new perspectives, new ideas, new skills. So we wanna tap into that. Um, with recruitment, it's very important to make use of your resources. Think about how you find out about things at your school. Do you guys do sidewalk chalking? Is there a bulletin board that everyone goes to? Is there a school newspaper everybody reads? Do you guys have a radio station? Is there a LinkedIn group? Is there a Snapchat group? However you all find out about things at school, make sure Phi Alpha Delta is represented there. I think there's a rule of like, you have to hear something seven times before you decide to take action. So make sure that you are using all of those outlets to get the Phi Alpha Delta name out to your school. Um, there's nothing more heartbreaking to me where someone was like, I wish I knew that we had Phi Alpha Delta at my school. I've just never heard of it. So use your resources. Um, we have students reach out to us saying that they want to join Phi Alpha Delta and how do they connect with the chapter? I really like sharing not only your chapter email addresses and your um, officer contact information, but I like to share, share your social media. So if your chapter has an Instagram page, you have a LinkedIn group, please share those links with us so that we can share them with the students. You can check to see if we have the correct link for your chapter by checking this out right here, pad.org slash prelaw chapter locator. Um, I know our alumni look at this page, our law school members look at this page. Um, so let's make sure that we can be all connected. Um, number one thing when you're recruit recruiting is ask. You have to ask people to complete the membership application. If you can see at this table here, they have a laptop open. I suggest you guys have a laptop or a tablet open to the PAD membership application. Anyone who's interested in PAD, let's get them to fill out a membership application. That way, the executive office is going to have those people's contact information to pass on to you. And we're also going to follow up with them through our processes and procedures. If there is someone who is not interested in completing the membership application, I see there's an interest list right there as well. So when you're recruiting, very important, get their contact information so that you can follow up with them. With the membership application, the membership application does not obligate anyone to become a member, and you can submit that membership application without paying. So really, it's just another way to collect contact information so that we can share it with you and we can all follow up with these members. If you do not already have a recruitment chair, please assign one of your members as a recruitment chair. It is a big job. Um, everyone in the chapter should be recruiting, but let's give one person that chair position. Um, when you're recruiting, I want you guys to recruit some key players. Uh, try to get someone from your student government association or your student activities board, whoever it is that makes those decisions about clubs and organizations, makes those decisions about fundraising. Make sure we get a Phi Alpha Delta member in there to advocate for your chapter. 
All right. So with recruitment, we have to talk about our open membership policy. Um, our open membership policy is one of the things that we are very strict about. We give our chapters a lot of room to serve the needs of their members, but you must follow this open membership policy. If you are not interested in following this open membership policy, then Phi Alpha Delta is probably not the right organization for you. Um, we are Phi Alpha Delta, we have these Greek letters, we call ourselves a fraternity, but we are not part of that Greek life. We are not part of the Panhellenic. We are a professional fraternity association. So we are a community, we are a group that wanna help people with their legal education, but we are not doing things like rushing or bids or pledges. We do not do classes. Um, we do not follow that Greek system. So. Phi Alpha Delta's open membership policy states, anyone who is in good standing, however your school defines it, is welcome to join Phi Alpha Delta. To join Phi Alpha Delta, they must not be a member of another pre-law fraternity. Um, I know some of your schools have pre-law societies or honor societies, that is fine, but they cannot be a member of another pre-law fraternity. They must be in good standing, however your school defines it. Then to join, all they need to do is complete a membership application and pay their fees. That's it. Complete a membership application and pay their fees. That is it. And then they will be eligible to attend your chapter's initiation ceremony. Your chapter cannot have any other requirements for membership. And we are strict in that in that you cannot even tell a student that they must attend an interest meeting before they can join. You can't release the membership application at that interest meeting. Everyone can fill out a membership application at any time. Um, Phi Alpha Delta does not, require, does not allow required attendance at events. You guys cannot have an attendance policy that you have to come to three chapter meetings or you're not a member. That is not allowed. Everyone is welcome to participate as much or as little as they are able to. Um, Phi Alpha Delta was founded um, as a fraternity of first. We were the first fraternity to allow all races. We were the first fraternity to allow women into us. So inclusivity is at the heart of who Phi Alpha Delta is. And if you are not interested in being an inclusive organization, then Phi Alpha Delta is not the correct um, organization for you. Um, I would say this open membership policy is one of the things that I am meeting with chapters a lot. So if anybody has questions about our open membership policy, or you want to talk about your recruitment process, please ask now. The questions that you have, another chapter may have the same one. I apply for another pre-law front at the same time, but then only commit to one. Um, I would say, so are you saying like if you're in another pre-law fraternity, they don't accept you, then you want to join Phi Alpha Delta? That would be fine as long as you are not a member of another pre-law fraternity. Does anyone else have questions about our open membership policy or recruitment? This is a big one, so I really just want to make sure that you guys have the time for it. All right, so open membership policy. Anyone in good standing at your school and not a member of another pre-law fraternity is welcome to join by submitting their fee and uh, membership application and then attending your chapter's initiation ceremony. All right, so how to join is very easy. One, two, three steps. Apply, that means fill out your membership application, pay your initiation fee, and then get initiated. Um, during the pandemic, we started holding fraternity-wide virtual initiation ceremonies, and they have been very well attended. So we continue to hold a fraternity-wide virtual initiation ceremony every semester. If for some reason your chapter is unable to host an initiation ceremony this semester, you are welcome to attend our fraternity-wide virtual initiation ceremony. It is Wednesday, November 6th at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Um, at this ceremony, it's not just going to be pre-law student members. You're also going to see law student members, alumni members, um, members of our international executive board. So this is not only 
um, an opportunity for you all to be initiated for your new members. It's also an opportunity for your existing members to recommit to Phi Alpha Delta. And it's also a networking opportunity for you all. So how do you join Phi Alpha Delta? You fill out your membership application, you pay your fees, you attend an initiation ceremony. It is a very easy process. All right, so let's talk about those fees. So the pre-law initiation fee is $150 for new members. That $150 covers your membership until you graduate. I think there's a pretty big misunderstanding that Phi Alpha Delta pre-law membership is for life, and it is not. Pre-law membership ends at graduation. So that $150 covers your membership while you are an undergraduate student. Now, if your school has a graduate program, we would consider those graduate students part of the pre-law program. So $150 covers um, your, your pre-law membership until you graduate. Um, once you do graduate, you have options to continue your membership. The pre-law to law membership transition fee is $80. Um, if you're not going on to law school, you can join our auxiliary for $50 annual dues. So someone who's taken a gap year, if you want to continue your membership, you can be a pre-law member, transfer for, to the auxiliary. And then once you enroll in law school, you can transfer once again into your law school chapter. Once you join at the law school level, that is when you become a member for life. So Faculty are able to join for free, but we still want to make sure that we have their membership application. I want all of you to think about right now, does your chapter have a faculty advisor? If not, that is another key player that you want to recruit this semester. Every semester, every chapter is required to have a faculty advisor. That faculty advisor is the link between the school and Phi Alpha Delta, and that in the best case scenario is someone who's going to advocate for Phi Alpha Delta, maybe help you find a speaker, maybe help you with recruitment. If you do not have a faculty advisor, please work on recruiting one. It is not a big time commitment for them. The only thing that we really expect from our faculty advisors is that they monitor elections in the spring. Besides that, again, they are welcome to serve as much or as little as they are able. So pre-law initiation fee for your new members, $150. I know that's a scary number, especially as a as a college student. We can break that up into a monthly payment plan, um, so it's not that hundred and fifty dollars all at once. Um, officers should not be collecting the international initiation fees. You all are welcome to collect local dues. To collect local dues, they must be written into your bylaws and on file with the executive office. Uh, do not collect the international initiation fee and local dues together. Um, it makes it so messy. There's a uh, lag time between when the members are marked as paid versus not marked as paid. So it's very much just easier to have your new members submit their international initiation fees right on pad.org. You can keep your hands out of it and it'll make it so much easier for you. I promise. So uh, the $150 is for each member. There are payment plans available. If you have students that where a payment plan is not even going to help them out, you may want to consider fundraising for those in need of financial assistance. Check in with your school. I have heard of several schools now that have programs available um, for students to cover organizational fees. Is someone technically a member before they are initiated if they are planning to be initiated but waiting? So I would say, yes, they are a paid member, but they are not an initiated member. Um, the initiation ceremony is just an important ritual where you take the oath of membership. All right, so we talked about the initiation fee. It's $150 for pre-law members. So then people are gonna ask you, why should I pay this $150? Where is that money going? Um, if any of you are members of other organizations or other fraternities, sororities, you know that you pay an initiation fee, you pay a pledging fee, you pay for your pins, your badges. Phi Alpha Delta is not that way. You pay that initiation fee and you are a member. So that's going to include your certificate and pin. Certificates and pins are sent for each new member. Um, if you are an officer, this one should be a big deal to you. 
um, your initiation fees goes towards insurance for the chapter. So your chapter and your chapter officers are, are um, covered by our liability insurance as long as you are following our policies. Um, insurance is a big one. It's a big cost here at Phi Alpha Delta. And know that's where a lot of your initiation fees go is to making sure that you are all covered. It also includes those recruitment materials um, we talked about earlier, all of those brochures and stickers. You can request as many recruitment boxes as you want, and those are covered for free. Um, each initiation fee also covers a donation to our foundation. The Phi Alpha Delta Foundation is our charitable entity that provides scholarships and grants and helps support um, our students. Um, so for pre-law conference coming up this fall, you heard me say each chapter gets one member who gets to attend without paying their registration fee. That isn't thanks to our foundation. Um, that is why that is possible for us to waive those fees for one member per chapter. Um, those fees also go to us, the executive office staff. We are here as your resource to make sure that you have everything that you need to operate your chapter. We are here to support you. Um, and one of the things that we do here is by providing those membership benefits and discounts. So our staff negotiates those partnerships with these national companies. Um, for example, um, Kaplan gives 25% off their services to Phi Alpha Delta members. So that could be up to $500 off one of their LSAT prep courses. So I like to say, even if you use just one of your membership benefits, your membership's going to pay for itself. So you're paying $150 to join Phi Alpha Delta, but you're getting $500 off a Kaplan course. Um, we also have partnerships with the Princeton Review, ETS GRE. Um, we have a very good relationship with Access Lex Institute. One of their resources is a scholarship data bank. They are all about helping you finance your legal education. Um, Phi Alpha Delta also has a career center. If you check that out, it looks like it's just a job posting board, but they actually have a lot of other resources available there, including a free resume review. So every Phi Alpha Delta member gets their resume reviewed for free. Uh, you also get, as a Phi Alpha Delta member, a free financial counseling session from an accredited financial counselor. Um, so if you have questions about student loans, um, credit, anything like that, you get that for free. Um, we also have a ton of other discounts. If you check out our membership benefits page, um, we have online therapy. We have a um, partnership with BetterHelp. We have travel discounts, hotels, amusement parks, movies, concerts, uh, professional attire, Brooks Brothers, Joseph A. Bank. Um, so Phi Alpha Delta is more than going to pay for itself as long as you are making use of your membership. Um, the most valuable part of Phi Alpha Delta membership is our network. Phi Alpha Delta is the largest legal organization behind the American Bar Association. Our network is our greatest asset. So I want you all to become very comfortable in being able to explain the value of Phi Alpha Delta and what are the membership benefits and discounts available to your members. This is going to be one of the top questions you get when you're recruiting. So I want you all to check out this list, get familiar with it, and be able to, to tell your members what they're going to get out of Phi Alpha Delta. Um, always go back to the network. Our network is number one. Um, I talked about your fall calendar when we opened this session. Your calendar is a great recruitment tool. It's going to let your students know what they can expect from Phi Alpha Delta and what they're going to get out of attending your events. Like I said, these slides are all going to be available for you. So you will have this to be able to share with everyone in your chapter so that everyone can talk about Phi Alpha Delta and be confident in explaining the value. So we talked a little bit about Phi Alpha Delta. You all are pr probably pre-law students. Once you graduate, if you follow this, you can either become a law student member if you enroll in law school, you can become an auxiliary member if you're taking a gap year, or maybe you're gonna become a paralegal or go into another legal profession where you don't need to go to law school. Um, if you do not take any action upon graduation, then you will become a pre-law alumni. Pre-law alumni are not active members. We no longer consider them members of Phi Alpha Delta. So you can join um, as a pre-law student, you can join as an auxiliary member, and you can transfer your membership um, throughout your legal education and career. 
I always like to say, no matter where you are in your legal education career, Phi Alpha Delta has a place for you. No matter your student status, your professional status, if you have an interest in the legal field, we want to help you with that journey. And Phi Alpha Delta has a place for you. All right, so new materials, I think as officers, that's probably going to be the next thing that people ask you about is, when do I get my certificate and pin? So as a chapter officer, as soon as you have your initiation ceremony date set, please complete this form so that we can send out your certificates and pins. Um, this form is just letting us know your initiation ceremony date and your mailing address. We cannot send out your certificates and pins without knowing your exact initiation ceremony date. I, that's why I like to say, plan ahead, have your calendar ready, have that ceremony ready on your calendar so that you can request your certificates and pins. Um, you only need to make this um, request once per semester unless you add on a ceremony date or your ceremony date changes or your mailing address changes. So if your chapter has your initiation ceremony date set for the semester, please fill out this form so that we can send out your certificates and pins. Um, we send out certificates and pins monthly. So the earlier you let us know when the ceremony is, the greater your chance of getting them in time for your ceremony. Um, if you do not have certificates and pins in time for your ceremony, we suggest that you give out a red carnation in their place. That is Phi Alpha Delta's official flower. Um, and then as long as you make this request this semester, those certificates and pins will be sent this semester. Um, we do not send extra certificates and pins. We only send enough for the amount of new member paid applications that we have received. Um, we also have another service. If maybe you guys have a remote, a remote student or someone was unable to attend the initiation ceremony or there's some tragic accident and they're unable to get to campus, they cannot meet up with your officers to receive their materials. We can also send certificates and pins directly to individuals. Uh, there is a $10 service fee for this. This is not you paying for your certificate and PIN. This is you paying for the service of having it sent to you um, directly. So we expect that our officers will request these certificates and PINs, and we expect our officers to hand out the certificates and PINs to the new members, even if they were unable to attend the ceremony. So um, certificates and pins are one of the things that Phi Alpha Delta can send to you. The other thing that we can send you is chapter rosters. Like I said, we have a list of every single person that has filled out an application for your chapter, whether they have paid or not, whether they have become initiated or not, Phi Alpha Delta has that list. Yes, Zena. We have an officer saying that they were, they have a surplus of initiation materials um, and how they should proceed with what, what should they do with them? Should they throw them out? Should they contact those members? Okay. Well, you know, that is a really unfortunate situation. If your chapter has a stash of certificates and pins, that means there are new members in your chapter that have not received their certificate and pin. So the first thing that I would do is check in with the previous chapter officers um, to find out what happened there, check in with your faculty advisor. And the other thing that we can do is we can um, we can send you a list of past members to see if you are able to get in contact with them to distribute the materials to them. Um, if you're unable to distribute the materials to them, then you can send them back to us here at the executive office and we can provide a shipping label for you. Was there another question, Zena? Um, no, somebody did propose, um, to explain the pay pay payment plan in further detail. I was going to provide them with a link that you can break up the payment plan in a variety of different ways. And the link will explain that. Okay. Um, so the pre-law payment plan, so that $150 can be split into smaller monthly payments. So they can either do two monthly payments three months of payments or four months of payments. Um, when they fill out that payment plan form, it'll have their credit card information. And once a month, their credit card will be charged until they have completed that $150 initiation fee payment. 
Now, sometimes we have members that enroll in a payment plan and then end up not completing their full obligation of the $150 initiation fee. Those members you will see on your roster as DP, which is disputed payment. That means that they entered into a payment plan but did not complete it, so we would not consider them um, paid members. So I hope that answers your question about the payment plan. Um, the payment plan is filling out a form with your contact information, your credit card information, and you get charged once a month um, at, at the amount that you set until the $150 application has been completed. So um, the other things that Phi Alpha Delta can help you with is recruitment materials. So we can send you out that recruitment box. That is the link to request a recruitment box. We also have a recruitment page that has virtual resources available for you, um, like a PowerPoint um, slideshow. We have some images available for you. Um, what you need to recruit, we hope that we are able to provide that for you. Um, new member initiation materials. When I say initiation materials, that means certificates and pins because we expect your new members are receiving certificates and pins at your initiation ceremony. Your officers must request that at least once a semester with your initiation ceremony date and mailing address. Um, we have a ton of resources and policies available right here. Um, get very familiar with the Phi Alpha Delta website. Everything that you need is there. Um, make sure you're getting our emails. If there's ever a deadline, if there's anything we need from you, we will email you about it probably multiple times. All right, so I've mentioned this many times today, your programming calendar, your calendar of events, whatever you wanna call it. We've talked about this is a recruitment tool. It lets your students know what to expect and what they're gonna be getting out of attending your meetings. Um, you're going to have more people attending your meetings at, if they're at a predictable date and time. Maybe Phi Alpha Delta meets the second and third Thursdays at four o'clock in the student union. If it's predictable, it's going to be much easier for people to juggle their schedules. You may want to send out a poll, ask people what the best dates, what the best times are for the majority of your members. Um, and in that survey, you might want to also ask them, who do they want to hear from? Who are some legal professionals that they want? What are the practice areas that they're interested in? What questions do they have about taking the LSAT test? Um, your calendar should be having events that help you all make an informed decision about law school and answers the questions that you have. If you have a question about it, somebody else at your school does too. So if you don't have your calendar finalized, do it now. We are here to help. Um, if you're not sure where to start um, on the right hand side of this page, this is a checklist of what we expect you to have. I think if you hold two or three events a month, you're going to be able to hit this easily. Um, and keep in mind that one event can cover multiple event categories. So initiation ceremonies, you are supposed to have two per semester or one per quarter. I suggest you have one earlier in the semester when everyone's really excited about Phi Alpha Delta, everyone who's just joined, and then another one towards the end of the semester for those who have, weren't able to attend the first one or maybe who joined later in the semester. Your initiation ceremony can also be a recruitment event. It can serve as a professional event. Invite some local law school students. Invite some alumni. That's going to be professional networking for you, so you're going to knock off professional networking, social, um, and initiation ceremony all at the same time. Um, I have some chapters where after the initiation ceremony, they go to a restaurant that's doing a percentage night. They're going to give a percentage of the sales back to Phi Alpha Delta. So it can also be an opportunity for fundraising and networking. Um, executive board meetings, hold those twice per month. I think that's a really good rule. And save a lot of your decision making for that. I don't, nobody wants to go to a chapter meeting where you're talking about, oh, what t-shirt color should we order? Or does anyone have this person's email address? Those types of things should be handled at the executive board meeting so that your chapter meetings are saved for your members to get something, having a speaker, having headshots, doing something fun. Um, the executive office is here to help connect you with local law school chapters, alumni members. Um, like I just said, pair each chapter meeting with an event or activity so people aren't just showing up to a room to be lectured at. They're getting something out of it. 
Um, if you're having trouble setting up events, we can help you. Um, any company listed on our membership benefits page, not only are they providing our Phi Alpha Delta members discounts on their services, but they will also come and speak to your chapter. So they will speak about LSAT prep, how to write a personal statement, um, how to financial, finance your legal education. That is what they are here to do. Um, they are not here to sell to you. They are here to provide you resources. Um, if you're really not sure where to start, you can start with the Phi Alpha Delta National Calendar. If you, um, we have a ton of events coming up. We have a speaker series. We have a health initiative that's celebrating Mental Health Day. We have a leadership series going on. So if you're not sure where to start with your calendar, start with our national calendar. Start putting those events onto your calendar. Um, when are midterms? When are finals? Cross those days out because you're not scheduling anything then. Um, and then as far as content goes, we have a lot of our past presentations recorded and available on our PAD YouTube channel. So maybe you guys do a viewing party and have a discussion afterwards with one of our past presentations. So I feel like I've talked about the calendar a lot, but it is very important for you to have those dates finalized so people know what to expect and so people are more willing to join and then att actually attend your meetings. So I talked about the leadership series. Um, when I introduced you to the executive office staff earlier in the presentation, we talked about Lasha Tay Grayson. She is in charge of our leadership and DEI initiatives. So she has a series coming up, a monthly series. So I'm talking very quickly about things. She's going to dive into it. We're going to get into it. Uh, we've got Recruitment 101, Mastering Recruitment and Tabling, Effective Strategies for Chapter Growth. Um, that's September 10th. I know September is going to be a big one for recruitment. October, that is when the challenges seem to come out. Um, maybe you have officers who aren't doing anything. Maybe your members are becoming apathetic and aren't showing up to your events. So let's talk about it. October 15th, let's overcome challenges and conflict and build a stronger chapter together. And then in November, we're already going to start thinking ahead to the spring semester. Let's make sure that we have um, a plan to transition your chapter into the next semester. So we're going to pass the message, ensuring consistency and success for chapter transition. Um, all of these are on the national calendar on pad.org. This is the QR code. I'm going to send you all um, copies of these slides so you can click on these links as well. Um, so like I said, I'm going very quickly. I'm going very surface level. La Chate will be able to dive in deep with all of you on these subjects. Um, the next national event we have to talk about is the PAD Pre-Law Conference, um, Law Expo and Mock Trial Competition. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Every chapter is expected to be represented by one member. To help meet that expectation, one member gets their registration fee waived. So you are still going to be responsible for your hotel and travel costs, but your registration fee is waived for your first member. Um, we know fundraising is one of the biggest barriers to coming to the pre-law conference. So that's why we definitely want you all working on fundraising. Um, we have a planning session for pre-law conference coming up September 4th. Again, it's going to be at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So we're going to talk more about fundraising and grant applications and um, really talk more about how we can connect you with the resources you need to fundraise so that you can attend the conference. Um, each chapter should be represented by one member, but you are welcome to send as many members as you want. If you check out the pre-law conference page on pad.org, we have a planning guide there. That planning guide includes a sample budget. It also includes a sample letter. So this is a letter that you can send to your school to ask for funding. Um, I had a chapter officer email me earlier today that she sent that exact form letter onto her dean, and now her dean is funding three students to come to the conference. So don't take no for an answer. Don't think it's too expensive. We have so many options available for you so that you can all attend pre-law conference. Um, Pre-law conference is a networking opportunity. Not only are you going to be networking with pre-law students, but we're also going to have a law school expo. We usually have about 100 law schools. Last year, I think 60% of those law schools gave out um, law school application fee waivers. And sometimes those people at the table are the people making the admissions decisions. So um, I think pre-law conference is very important for our juniors and our seniors. Everyone is welcome to attend. I promise you it will be a valuable experience. Um, 
It's in Alexandria, Virginia, Halloween weekend. If you guys want an excuse to come to DC for Halloween, to see the sites, um, this is really a good opportunity to go where those legal decisions are made. We have completely revamped our agenda this year. So we have built in so much more free time so that you guys can explore the DC area. Um, the mock trial competition is part of the pre-law conference, but you do not need to compete in mock trial to attend the pre-law conference. We have a ton of other activities for you, networking, socials, workshops, speakers. Um, there's a lot to offer at the PAD pre-law conference. Um, if you've attended in the past, please talk to your chapter about it. Let them know what kind of experience you had. Um, so if had pre-law conference is something that's interest you, join me again on September 4th, where we're going to dive into how to get you there and what you can expect. All right, so we've got to talk about these due dates and deadlines. Like I said, we are always going to email you if we need anything from you. Please read our emails. I know we send a lot of emails. We have a lot of information that we want to get to you. So um, here I have some major due dates, deadlines. Um, September 23rd to 27th is National Hazing Prevention Week. We hope you all do something to celebrate that. Um, we do not haze here at Phi Alpha Delta. Um, November 8th is PAD Founders Day. We are going to have a whole week of celebrations that week, um, including on November 6th is that fraternity-wide virtual initiation ceremony that we talked about earlier. Um, November 8th, 1902, that is our Founders Day. It's an important day. Um, so that's when we're going to celebrate PAD Founders Day. Um, PAD Founders Day is also our day of giving. That is when we get a lot of the donations to the foundation, which is PAD's charitable entity. Um, as officers, this date should also stick out to you because that is when spring calendars are due to the executive office. Yes, your spring calendars are due in November so that we can get you feedback and so that we can make sure you are on the right path. We don't need to know exact days and times. We want to know that that planning has begun for the spring. Um, so for the spring, the big thing is going to be elections and officer transitions. Um, your deadline to hold chapter elections is April 5th. You can hold them earlier in the semester if you would like. Um, we have our deadline in April so that there is enough time for that officer transition to take place before the officers are graduate and gone. Um, April 15th is that deadline to complete that officer transition, and that's also going to be when your fall calendars are due to the executive office. So you should all already have your fall calendars done because they were due back in April of 2024, um, but we will still accept them. Please send us your calendars, even if they're late, even if they're incomplete, if it's a super rough draft. Let us know your calendars so that we can give you feedback and we can give you connections. Um, we talked a little bit about this, June 2nd, it's the first Monday in June is when award applications are due um, for the previous school year. You can fill out award applications at any time. Um, the Phi Alpha Delta Pre-Law Conference has its own set of deadlines, which you can see here. Um, we talked about September 4th, we're having that virtual planning session. Very quickly after that, September 15th, that is your deadline to apply for a grant. So the foundation helps fund our grants uh, they are worth $500, and you can use that money to help with your cost to get to pre-law conference. So maybe that's going to help with reserving your hotel room or um, your travel plans to get to Arlington, Virginia. Um, anyone who has an interest in attending pre-law conference, please submit a registration form. The earlier you register, the cheaper it's going to be for you. You can register without paying and still um, qualify for that early bird rate. So right now, the registration fee for the pre-law conference after that first member is $299 per person. After October 1st, that's going to go up to $349 per person. So if you're interested in coming to pre-law conference, fill out the conference registration form, save yourself 50 bucks. Um, if it turns out you're unable to attend, we can always cancel your registration um, by October 4th. Um, October 4th is also the deadline to register a mock trial team. We already have nine or 10 mock trial teams and we only accept 12. So if mock trial is something that your chapter is interested in, there is still time to send a mock trial team this year. The case has not been released yet. So no one is ahead of the game. You are all at the same point. Um, we still have room for, I think, two or three more teams. But October 4th is a deadline to register a mock trial team or 
whenever those 12 slots get filled. So the earlier you can plan, the better. And then October 9th is the deadline to book a hotel room in our conference room block. Um, what that means is we have negotiated a special rate for the rooms with the hotel, and you have to use our special link to get that special rate. After October 9th, you're going to have to pay full price for your room. All right, so some other things the executive office can help with. Um, we can help you with your chapter elections and officer transitions. We've talked about the calendar. We can connect you with those membership benefit partners. If you see someone on the membership benefits page, but you're not sure who to connect with to have them come speak with your chapter, let us know. We can connect you with law students, alumni. Um, another very important one is if there is ever an incident at your chapter, if there is ever an assault, somebody making someone uncomfortable, if you have a policy question, if you're not sure your chapter is doing the right thing, we have an incident report form. Um, if this is something serious, number one, call 911. If this is a, a number one, call 911 if there's an emergency happening. After that, check in with your school, find out where your uh, school resources are for solving um, issues, and then please always let us know. You can fill out this incident report your incident report can remain anonymous. If it is anonymous, there is not a way for us to follow up with you. Um, so I would suggest putting your contact information on the incident report so we can follow up with you. From there, we can keep your identity anonymous with any investigation. Um, we can also help with documents for your university if they require bylaws, verification of your good standing status, if they need a certificate of insurance. Um, those are all things that we can help you with. Um, and if you're not sure where to start, we can always do a virtual chapter visit um, with us here at the executive office staff. So I hope from today you've learned you have a ton of resources and the executive office is here to help you connect with those resources. Um, I do have another slide after this, but I wanted to just take a pause. That was a lot of information. Do we have questions? Is there concerns? Um, like I said, if you have a question or concern, I'm sure there's someone else who has the same one. So if we can answer them all together, I'm happy to do that at this time. So you guys are welcome to raise your hand. You're welcome to put it in the Q&A. If I don't see anything in the next few seconds, I will just move on. Um, I think I've got one more slide after this. All right, seeing no questions, um, let's connect. Um, this is Dina and I's um, contact information. We are gonna be your primary contacts here at the executive office. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect with you all. Um, and if there's anything you wanna dive in deeper, we can always schedule a virtual chapter visit. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, I know this was a lot of information, but I really appreciate you giving us some of your time. Um, your service to Phi Alpha Delta does not go unnoticed. We know you all are busy students with many other responsibilities. So thank you so much for giving some of your time to Phi Alpha Delta. Um, and we appreciate the service to the student, the school, and the community. Thank you all. <laughs>